Good morning. Thanks, Dan. I'm glad you're here. Welcome. Welcome to Grace Bible Church. Uh, if this is your first time, a special welcome. If this is your second time, uh, you're still welcome. So thanks for being here. I've told that joke before, haven't I? No one's paying attention. Okay, why don't you stand with us and sing, Grace Greater Than Our Sins.
to Grace Bible Church of Phoenix. And if you're new here, we'd like you to connect with us in the bulletin. You'll notice there's a QR code. You can click on that with your phone. You can connect with us and share your information if you're willing to give that to us. There, are, there should also be a pocket or a, a card in the chair pocket in front of you. Um, but today, we've got a couple announcements. First thing is today, we have a special congregational meeting. We are voting on a new board member. Um, back in the spring when we have our norm, normal congregational meetings, uh, Dan Rahoy, after serving for decades, I mean, really, uh, as, a, as um, a member of our church board, he retired, and we do thank you for your years of service. At that time, we did not have a replacement for his position, but we do now. And so we're going to be voting on Matthew McFadden, who's been born and raised literally in this church, and that will be right after the worship service. So logistically, what that's going to look like is we're going to dismiss everyone, have a couple minutes to let you say hello to all your friends, and we're going to put the five-minute countdown up on the screen. And when the five minutes are done, we're going to ask everyone who would like to stay for the vote to come in. Uh, members and non-members alike can vote. Uh, we'll have the vote. It's not going to be a long process, but that'll be immediately after the worship service today. And then next Sunday, we have our welcome lunch, as it's the first Sunday of the month. Uh, you, if you're new to the church and would like to know more about uh, Grace Bible Church of Phoenix, you can stick around and have lunch with myself. Uh, next week, one of the elders is going to be there, and that'll be in the Multipurpose Center. And also next Sunday, we start our new Sunday School class series, uh, November, December. Matt McFadden uh, is the name of the day today. Uh, he's going to be teaching that class, and I love the name of the class, Stuff kids ask about that's going to be interesting so um and we were all kids at one time so we can say hey i never asked this when i was a kid you can ask the same questions but that'll be for november we're only having one adult sunday school class for november then december we'll also have our membership class and i will be teaching that in december so that is it for announcements we do have some other events coming up you can read about those in your bulletin, but let's take a moment and we'll pray for our offering for those of you who have come prepared to give, and then we will dismiss the kids for Children's Church. Let's pray. Dear Lord, today is a good day. Um, we are here in your presence as a church family, um, able to worship you, learn more about you, and to honor you in our thoughts and our words and our deeds and, and even lifting up our voices today. Father, we do acknowledge that you are the source of all good things in this life for us. We stand dependent upon you. So, Father, uh, for the offering that we're about to take, we thank you for blessing us, giving us the resources that we can take care of our own needs, but then also giving us enough that we can share back with you what is rightfully yours, and so we can let the ministry of our church um, go forth and be a blessing to others. So we pray um, your blessing upon those who have come prepared to give, and uh, for the rest of this service, Lord, just be with me. Give me the, the, the clarity and the thoughts to express um, what it means to be planted um, according to our series. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. All right, kids, up through second grade, you are dismissed to follow, looks like, Miss Teresa. All right, so I got to get something out of the way. Uh, most of you know... And those of you who don't, there's a big bandage on my head, and I had a little accident this last weekend. Um, Saturday night, early Sunday morning, uh, I, I got up to take my pills. There was no water, and I, I went to go get some water. My little dog, Lucy, jumped off the bed, tripped over Lucy, hit my head on the desk, and now I have seven stitches. And um, yeah, so it, 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 I'm grateful it wasn't as serious as it could have been. It could have been a lot worse. Um, I would show you a picture of my gaping wound in my skull, but um, I don't want to scare the women and children. And, and the main, just kidding. The main reason I don't want to is because the guys in the sound booth would love to use that as the YouTube thumbnail for, for the YouTube video. So I didn't want to even tempt them. So if you want to see a picture, I got one on my phone. I can, I can show it to you if you're into that kind of stuff. But I wish... I wish I had a better story, you know, tripping over my dog, that's kind of lame. I wish I could have said, yeah, I, I survived an assassination attempt, you know? At the last second, I just turned my head and it glanced off my skull, my forehead, or, or I stopped a bank robbery or something like that, but no, it is what it is. So that's why I've got a bandage, I probably won't have it next Sunday, and you can see the nice little scar that I'm going to have probably for a long time. Well, today, um, Sunday, last Sunday in October, 
I feel like, I feel like we can finally say we made it, right? It's fall, right? It's fall. Today it's going to be, what, 93? But I don't know if you've seen the weather forecast for the next few days. We're, we're falling off a cliff. I mean, we're going to go down cooler temperatures. And I think for once, all of us in Phoenix would like the entire month of October to be like 82, you know, so that we can go down from the heat, kind of have a, a nice warm fall, then get into the cooler temperatures. But it's like God turned off the oven. He pushed the off button on the oven and no one opened the door to let the heat out. So all October it was, you know, in there and, and someone just opened the door probably today. So we're looking forward to that. But it's fall and here at church we're talking about trees. We are in our series called Planted. And speaking of trees, this is the time of year for those of you who have not lived in Phoenix your whole life. If you lived up north like I did in Washington and Michigan, I miss this time of year. This is like the most beautiful time of the year in the northern parts of our country where all the leaves change colors. And I remember having that in Washington. They had a lot of um, trees that didn't, the, they were not deciduous. The leaves would not fall. But in, back in Michigan, the oak trees and the elms, they turned yellow and, and red and orange. They're just beautiful. The bad news is they fall on the ground and you have to rake them up. <laughs> but we don't have to do that here in Phoenix. But the leaves don't change here in Phoenix, but we know it's fall, not when the leaves change colors, but when the license plates start, ch start changing colors. That's my favorite um, Phoenix joke, but that's true. We're going to start seeing that. But we are in our series called Planted, and what we're doing is we're looking at a couple different Old Testament passages, which we're going to read again in just a couple minutes, where God describes humans like a tree. And he's describing people that are healthy and thriving. And he says they are like a tree. And so we are applying these passages to us both as individuals, but then also to us as a church. How can we be planted and what that looks like? So the first passage we looked at is from Psalm. We're going to read that again. This is just as a refresher. Psalm 1.1. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water that yield its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. In all he does he prospers. So this is God's will for us. He wants us to be planted by the source of truth. Jeremiah 17 is the other passage that we've looked at. Jeremiah 17, beginning in verse 5, says, Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength, whose heart turns away from the Lord. He is like a shrub in the desert and shall not see any good come. He shall dwell in the parched places of the wilderness in an uninhabited salt land. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. He is like a tree planted by water that sends out its roots by the stream and does not fear when heat comes, for its leaves remain green, and it is not anxious in the year of drought, for it does not cease to bear fruit. And so God uses a healthy, thriving tree to describe a person who trusts in the Lord. And when we're driving down the street and you see a tree, not that we like stare at trees as we're driving by, but when you notice a tree, what part of the tree is the first part that your eyes naturally look at? The leaves, the, the branches, the leaves. We usually don't stare at the roots or, you know, stare at the trunk. We look at the leaves, we look at the foliage. And it is, it is obvious when you look at a tree by its leaves and branches, whether it is sick or healthy. I got a picture. All right, which tree is sick? Which tree is healthy? <laughs> Two trees side by side in some, on some hill far away. And you look at that in a five-year-old and a 95-year-old and everyone in between can look at that and say, oh yeah, the healthy one's on the left. That's pretty clear. And the sick one is on the right. And so when people look at us, they can see, and when we evaluate ourselves, we can see if we are sick or healthy 
based on our branches and our leaves, which is what the message is about today. So using this analogy of a tree, and the Bible says that we are like trees, first week we did focused on the roots, talking about truth. We are a tree that is planted, and we talked about the things that matter. Soil matters, meaning truth matters. Where we're getting our information, what are we allowing to influence us? Second thing that matters is water matters. A tree's hope is in water, right? What do we hope in? Is it, is it the things of man or is it the things of God? And Jesus Christ matters. He's the source of truth and hope. A couple of weeks ago, we looked at the trunk and we talked about how this represents fellowship and the strength of our relationships. Church helps us battle against selfishness. Church is, is a place where people come together not to just meet our own needs, but to meet the needs of others. And if the trunk of a tree is greedy and selfish and does not allow the water and the nourishment from the soil to pass through it up into the branches, that tree will be sick and diseased. We looked at this main passage a couple weeks ago, Philippians chapter 2. says, Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interest. In other words, we have to look to our own interest in self, being self-centered in that way. We have needs that we need to take care of. But it says, but also to the interests of others. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus. Now last week, guest preacher, very providential that he was preaching last week because I was getting stitches in urgent care. But Colin Brown talked about service. And that wasn't necessarily planned, but I think it was really great timing. And today, what I want us to think about is the branches and leaves of the tree as our service. This is what we do. We serve. We have values here at this church. In fact, this series is kind of a masked way of talking about our values. And this value that we call faithful service is very important to us. This is what we do. This is why we are a church, so that we can faithfully serve Jesus Christ and this is how we describe this value here at our church. It says, we desire to have a continual and sacrificial willingness to serve in the spheres of influence that God has placed us in. We do this by equipping, encouraging, and empowering people to use their God-given gifts and abilities, embracing the opportunities to serve God. So that is our value. This is what we like to do. And I love the, the phrase in there, our spheres of influence, because trees have spheres of influence. They don't impact the entire world around them, but they have the little corner of their earth that they are, they are influencing. And when we serve Christ in our spheres of influence, we're just like a tree. We're spreading out our branches and leaves over other people in our lives. So I want us to just kind of think again of the progression of health that we see in a tree that fits the description of Psalm 1 and Psalm 7, Jeremiah 17. And I'm hoping this analogy of a tree, I'm liking this more each week that we get along in this series, but I'm hoping that this is kind of helpful. We usually don't think of ourselves as trees, but I do think that this is good because of what Jeremiah and Psalm says. But if a tree is planted in good soil and has water, then its root system is going to go in deep and soak up the nourishment, and that will make the tree healthy. And the nourishment and the water needs to pass through the roots into the trunk, but the trunk has to be unselfish so that it makes its way up into the branches so that the branches can grow and spread out and sprout leaves so that it is a blessing to its sphere of influence. So this is a great way for us to think about ourselves as someone who is planted in God's word. And all of us know, we probably don't think about this every day, but we know that there are benefits to trees to society, okay? Okay. Well, there's a couple of the bigger ones. We get oxygen from trees. We need trees to breathe. In fact, uh, I read a or something that said, one large tree can provide enough oxygen for up to four people to live for a day. So, yeah, they're kind of important. We need trees. So they clean the air. They provide oxygen. Um, they conserve water. Uh, they reduce flooding and, and water pollution. And they increase property values. For those of you who own a home, if you were looking to buy a home and one had a barren, flat land with nothing but rock, little rocks, big rocks, really big rocks, and no trees compared to a, tree, a, a property that had a few different kinds of trees, which house would you be more inclined to buy? 
The one with the trees. So it improves property value. It provides habitat for wildlife. Critters live in trees. Birds make nests in trees. Squirrels, all these different animals, they use trees to live. But here in Arizona, what is the number one benefit of a tree? Shade. It's right on the sermon notes. You know what you know. And in, in Arizona, you drive to Walmart or Safeway or Fries or wherever you're going, and you're looking to park. What's the first thing you're looking for? A tree. You're looking for a tree. All of us would rather park further away from the entrance under a tree than right by the entrance and letting our sun get to our, our cars get to like 150 degrees inside. So we know the benefit of, of uh, shade that, that, uh, that we get from trees. So for this morning, basing our thoughts on these two passages, I want us to think of ourselves as a tree and using the, bra- this, is, this is the shade, I had a shade picture. He's like, oh, it's kind of nice to, to look at that. But we're going to look at the branches of the tree and think of that as our service. And again, last week, Colin Brown did a message on serving. This is going to be a little bit similar, and that's okay, because you're going to hear this from a different person, which is a different perspective, and and I think this subject is good to hear twice from different perspectives to hopefully drive home a point. So we have three points today, meaning, and the question is, why should we serve? What does serving have to do with us being a tree planted in good soil? All right, and here are the three reasons. First reasons why we as followers of Christ serve is because that's who we are. We serve because that's who we are. It's not what we do, even though we do serve, but we are, as followers of Jesus Christ, we are servants. That is who we are. A tree spreads out its branches and produces leaves. Why? Because that's what it is. And when we take God's grace and we fight off selfishness and we serve Christ and others, we do that because that's who we are. All right, let's kind of um, drive this home with some passages of Scripture. Paul is one of our great examples in Scripture. In fact, in 1 Corinthians 11, Paul says to us, Be imitators of me as I am of Christ. Now, that's pretty bold. How many of us would look at other people and say, imitate me, do everything that I do because I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. I think most of us would like kind of shy away from that. But Paul says, I'm I'm dialed in. I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. You imitate me. And one of the things that we need to imitate Paul on is the way that he thinks about himself. And earlier in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, Paul says... This is how I think about myself, and this is how I want you to think about me. 1 Corinthians 4, verses 1 and 2 says, This is how one should regard us as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required of stewards that they should be found faithful. So Paul says, when you think of me, the first thing I want to come to your mind is Paul from Tarsus is a servant of Jesus Christ. And if we are to imitate Paul, this is a truth for all of us to embrace. We are servants. Why do we serve? Because that's who we are. Now, as we go through life, we get different titles and we kind of identify ourselves different ways, not the way that the world is talking about right now. But we identify ourselves through the different relationships that we have. Like, for instance, at work, you might say, I might ask you, who are you? And you might say, well, this is my name, but I'm a nurse, or I'm a firefighter, or I'm an accountant, or, you know, I bag groceries at the grocery store. We kind of identify ourselves through our work. We also identify ourselves through our relationships. I'm a husband, I'm a father, I'm a mother, I'm a wife. And those, as we go through life, sometimes those titles get added to us, and those can be really fun. In fact, we have a few people here today that are about ready to add the title to their life. Lauren and Adam Bray about to become mom and dad. We're very excited about that. Man, Angie, you're about to be grandma and grandpa. We're very excited about that. But we also identify ourselves through like our sports teams. Like I'm a Cardinals fan or I'm a Suns fan or, or whatever it is. Or, or your hobbies or your diet. You know, this is how I identify myself. I have a joke. I'm pretty sure I've told this before. It's a good one. So the joke goes, you walk into a room and there's 10 people there. One does CrossFit, one is a vegan. How do you know who does what? 
The answer is, don't worry, they will tell you. <laughs> and I used to do CrossFit, and yeah, I, I, like, I love to talk about it. But Paul says, when you think of me, think of me first and foremost as a servant. And the word that he used is hyperetis. It's not something that we need to know, but the key to that is it's a noun, okay? Hyperetis, servant, is a noun, meaning this is who he is. This is what he is. He is a servant. And the word for hyperetis means it's an under rower or a subordinate rower. Now, we don't go, we don't travel in ships very often. And when we do, we don't have people rowing the boat. But back then they did. And so a servant was someone who would row under the leadership of the captain of the ship or the boat. And so Paul's like, I'm not the captain of the boat. I'm just the servant. I just row. I row when the master tells me to row. And so Paul says, this is who I am. And this is who we are. This is who we are. We are servants of Christ. And what do we do? We serve. This is why we serve. Now, the verb form of servant is seen in many verses. So let's look at a couple of these. Of all the ones to pick, I I think this one kind of hit me the most this week as I was preparing. Galatians 5.13 says, For you were called to freedom, brothers. Now stop there. Don't keep reading. Take your eyes off the screen. Don't read. If you're a follower of Jesus Christ, you and I are free. We are free. Our sins have been paid. We are no longer slaves to sin and death. We have an eternal hope. So it says, for you were called to freedom, brothers. And now we have a choice. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh to be selfish, but through love, serve one another. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And the word here for servant, it's a verb, it's an action. It's doulos, meaning a slave or a bondman. And metaphorically speaking, it's talking about someone, someone who is a servant, is someone who gives himself up to another's will. Those whose service is used by Christ in extending and advancing his cause among men. And so a servant is someone who says, I do what the master asks me to do. And now that we are free from our sins as children of God, this is who we are, noun, and this is what we do, verb. Uh, trees can't think or act, okay? At least, at least not in real life. In the movies, they can. But if a tree could think and act, I think it would go something like this. I am a tree, Okay? I'm an oak, I'm a maple, I'm a pine, whatever it is. And as a tree, I want to spread my branches far and wide so that I can be a blessing to my environment. And this is a choice that you and I get to make through our service. Matthew chapter 6, Jesus says, we're going to read a couple things that Jesus says here. Matthew 6, verse 24 says, No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. We have to choose. If we're a servant of Jesus Christ, we have to choose. And serving money, what does that look like? Well, ultimately, it's serving yourself, getting money to spend on yourself. And Jesus modeled this servant's attitude for us. Think about this. Jesus is the author of our salvation. He is the one who is worthy to be glorified and honored and praised. And, and he will be served in the future when he comes back. But when, his, when he first came during his first advent, Matthew 20, Jesus says, Even as the Son of Man came, not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. So Jesus is modeling for us how we should live our life as a tree planted by the streams of water. John 12, 25, Jesus also says this. Whoever loves his life loses it. And whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, he must follow me. And where I am, there will my servant be also. And then I love this. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. So this is why we serve, because 
as the followers of Jesus Christ, this is who we are, servants of Jesus Christ. All right, the next reason why we serve, this is a little bit more practical, or just kind of gives us an idea of how the, what this looks like. The reason why we serve is to spread God's grace and mercy. We serve so that we are spreading God's grace and mercy to the people in our lives. And so if we have been saved by God's grace, and we now have the hope of eternal life, we need to share that grace with others. And we do that both with truth we share with them the truth of God's word, but we also do this in action. And again, I want you to think of yourself kind of as a tree. And I, and I hope you're enjoying this analogy. We got two more Sundays using this analogy. But if you're a tree, pretend you're a tree, would you want the branches of your, the leaves of your branches to stay close to your trunk and up high and only provide you a shade? Or would you want your branches and leaves to provide shade for people in your life? I think we would all want that. We would all want to say, we want other people in my life to benefit from me. And when we spread out our branches in service, this is what it looks like. So what does it look like to be a blessing to others? Romans 12, 10. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not be slothful in zeal. Be fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. So we share God's grace. We spread our branches and cast shade on other people when we love them, when we honor them, when we meet their needs. Again, I want to go back to Galatians. I think this is pretty important. Galatians 5.13 says, For you were called to freedom. Okay, this is our calling. We are free now. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh. But through love, serve one another. So when we serve each other, that's when we're spreading out our branches and we're casting shade on other people. We're not in 1 Thessalonians anymore. We spent the majority of earlier this part of this, the year in 1 Thessalonians. But do you remember, and we're going to look at the verse in case you don't remember. Do you remember what the first thing the Thessalonians did when they turned to Jesus Christ and put their faith in him? They served. They served. I love this passage. 1 Thessalonians 1.9, it says, For they themselves report concerning us the kind of reception we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols to do what? To serve the living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who delivers us from the wrath to come. So when the Thessalonians met the Apostle Paul, he shared with them the truth about Jesus Christ, showed them in the Old Testament that he is the Messiah. They said, this is it. This is the truth. I'm putting my faith in Jesus Christ. And then something clicked. They had a new identity. They had a new hope. And they turned from serving idols, which ultimately was serving themselves. And they said, now that I'm a follower of Jesus Christ, there's only one thing to do. I am going to turn and serve Jesus Christ. I'm going to turn and serve God. So I want to stop and kind of, as we've been talking about this for even three weeks, I want to talk and just stop and think about this for a second and just give us all an opportunity to evaluate ourselves. And so using this analogy of a tree from Psalm and Jeremiah, where are you at right now? Where are you planted? Are you planted in truth? What are you allowing to influence you? And are you unselfishly allowing God's grace and truth to not only nourish you, but then also pass through you to others. We do that through service. We do that by serving. And finally, there's one more reason why we serve, and this is kind of the big wake-up call. Colin mentioned this a little bit last week, but there's coming an event in the future that every single person in this room is going to experience, and we need to be reminded of it often so that we are focusing on what God wants us to be focused on. The last reason why we serve is because our service is going to be judged. Our service is going to be judged by Jesus Christ himself. And there is something wonderful about that, and there is something that is alarming and should cause us to be cautious. Colossians chapter 3 gives us the good part. Colossians 3 verse 23 says... Whatever you do as servants of Christ, whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men, knowing 
that from the Lord you will receive the inheritance as your reward. You are serving the Lord Christ. So that's the good part, okay? This gives us hope and endurance that we are looking forward to the return of Jesus Christ. Now the Bible also talks to us and teaches us about the judgment seat. And every single believer from all time is going to stand and give an account for their service and what they did during their life. Our service is going to be judged. And we'll look at a passage, one of the the, uh, parables that kind of teaches us a little bit about that. But I want to look at a a bad example of judgment for lack of service in the Bible. In Romans chapter 11, which I'm going to put on the screen in just a couple minutes here, Paul talks about how the nation of Israel, shortly after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, they were judged for their lack of faith and their lack of service. And the nation of Israel, as all of us know, in the Old Testament, they had a special and unique relationship with God. God chose Abraham and his descendants, the nation of Israel, to reveal his glory and power and grace and truth to the world. But instead, what did Israel do? Sometimes they got it right, but usually they they failed to serve the Lord. They didn't love the Lord. They, They ran off after foreign idols. And then God did something after the resurrection and ascension of Jesus Christ that he calls it a mystery. He temporarily broke off his relationship and special covenant with the nation of Israel temporarily. And he, like, and it says, like branches broken off a tree, and he grafted us Gentiles in. So I want to read this, and as we're reading this, understand, this shows God's judgment against people for their lack of service. We'll talk about how that affects us next. But Romans 11 talks about what God did to unbelieving, unserving Israel. Romans eleven seventeen. 17. But if some of the branches were broken off, and you, although a wild olive shoot, were grafted in among the others, and now share in the nourishing root of the olive tree, do not be arrogant towards the branches. If you are, remember, it is not you who support the root, but the root that supports you. Then you will say... Branches were broken off so that I might be grafted in. That is true. They were broken off because of their unbelief. But you stand fast through faith. So do not become proud, but fear. For if God did not spare the natural branches, neither will he spare you. Note the kindness and the severity of God. Severity towards those who have fallen, but God's kindness to you, provided you continue in his kindness. Otherwise, you too will be cut off. And even they, if they do not continue in their own belief, will be grafted in, for God has the power to graft them in again, and we know that he will someday at Christ's second coming. For if you were cut from what is by nature a wild olive tree and grafted contrary to nature into a cultivated olive tree, how much more will these, the natural branches, be grafted in into, back into their own olive tree? So I, I'm using this because it's using the analogy of branches being broke off of a tree. Israel didn't serve God, okay? Why didn't they serve him? Because they didn't have faith. The root didn't change. The soil didn't change. It was their service and their lack of faith. But today, God has grafted in us Gentiles, okay? Not the physical descendants of Abraham. He's grafted us into the olive tree. Why? So that we can serve, so that we can share and spread God's truth to the world around us. And we can be the blessing to the nations that the nation of Israel was intended to be. So we can see in the past how God judged Israel for a time for their lack of service. And this should be a lesson to all of us that our service in God's judgment is something that is very serious and it should be the utmost important to us. There are consequences if we serve and the consequences are reward. God will bless and reward us. But there are consequences if we don't serve. And the consequence is loss. Not loss of salvation. Our sins can never be um, judged against us. Jesus Christ already did that. But we will be judged for our lack of service. And there is the potential for the loss, loss of a reward. So I want to read from Matthew chapter 25. It's, a, it's a, an encouraging passage that gives us the possibility of reward. It's the parable of the faithful stewards. And I like to bring this up quite often because it fits so many different, um, different subjects that we address in life. But in Matthew chapter 25, 
Jesus tells this parable. He says, for it will be like a man going on a journey. Okay, and we can apply that to ourselves. Our life is like we're here on earth. Jesus, the master, gave us something and went away. He went on a journey. A man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted to them his property. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, and to each according to his ability. Then he went away. He who had received the five talents went at once and traded with them and made five talents more. Now think about this faithful servant. Think of him as a tree, okay? He knew his identity. He knew who he was. He knew that he was a servant of his master. And so he took his master's resources, like the soil and the water of the tree, and he was unselfish with them. And he spread out his branches as far as he could so that he could be a blessing, not only to other people, but to his master when his master returned. Verse 17. So also he who had the two talents made two talents more. But he who had result, received the one talent went and dug it in the ground and hid his master's money. Now, after a long time, the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. And he who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five talents more, saying, Master, you delivered to me five talents. Here, I have made five talents more. And his master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little and I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. That last phrase, enter into the joy of your master. The master wanted nothing more than to share his joy with his servant. And God wants nothing more than for us to share in his joy through our faithful service. And so like the servants we are, we need to make sure that we are planted in the right soil by the water of life, spreading out our branches to be a blessing to the people around us. And as we close, I just want to reemphasize a couple things. For us to be servants, we have to have the right mindset like Paul did. We don't just serve because there was a sign-up sheet and someone needed something to do. So, you know, there was a need. Okay, I guess I'll do it. The reason why we serve is because... That's who we are. That's who we are as followers of Jesus Christ. And through Christ, our service to him can be a blessing to others, like the branches and leaves of a tree are a blessing to the environment. So I want to close by doing some self-evaluation. I want to ask you these questions, and hopefully they are either encouraging or convicting, whatever, whatever the case needs to be. But according to Christ's words, let me ask you this question. Not, not in theory, but in reality, who or what is your master? Who or what is your master? We all serve. We all live our life. We do the things that we are obedient to. So what truly is your master? How are you serving Christ? If you are a servant of Christ, how are you serving Jesus Christ? Or maybe to use this analogy of a tree, where are you casting shade in your life? Does anyone in your life benefit for, by being near you? And last question is, Jesus is coming back. We don't know when, but he's coming back. Do you look forward to his return? And hearing him say, well done, good and faithful servant. This is why we serve. I want to close by reading Colossians 3 once again. We'll close in prayer, have the benediction, and then we'll stay for the congregational meeting. But I want to close by reading Colossians chapter 3, verse 23 and 24 again. It says, whatever you do, okay, inside a church, outside a church, in your home, in your work, it doesn't matter. Whatever you do, work heartily as, the, as for the Lord and not for men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the inheritance as your reward. You are serving the Lord Christ. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this passage of scripture. We thank you for this, this metaphor, this analogy of a tree that you've given us in Psalm and in Jeremiah 17. It gives us pause to think about what influences us, what are we pulling from in this world to give us our source of identity and, and inspiration. Father, you tell us in your word, because you have 
sealed us, you've cleansed us, you've justified us, you've baptized us into your name, all these things, you've adopted us, we are now, thankfully, your servants. And so, Father, I hope and pray that you've impressed that upon all of us as individuals, but then also as a church. And our hope is like a tree, that through us, your grace and mercy will spread out far and wide into our branches, into our leaves, so that we can cast shade and grace and mercy to the people in our spheres of influence. I pray that will be true of us as a church, as Grace Bible Church of Phoenix, but I also pray that that will be true of each and every one of us here as individuals. Lord, help us to have this mindset like Paul had this of himself. We are your servants, so Father, open our eyes for all the opportunities that we have to serve you. And we do this because we love and adore you. We pray this in your most holy name. Amen. I want to close with benediction from 1 Corinthians 15, 8. It says, Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. Amen. You're dismissed. In a couple minutes, we'll have the five-minute timer up on the screen, and then we will take our vote on Matt McFadden joining the board at that time. You are dismissed. <laughs>